My RV um, service here is 30 amp, 110 volt, which is quite a bit less than a normal house would be, which would be 200 amp, 220. Anyway, I I have my water heater on a separate circuit here, as it should be, but um, I really um, need more electricity than that so I've come up with a way of sharing this circuit with uh, two other devices Get this this is a kick heater I'm installing this kick heater here under the range and that's going to be one of the circuits and then I also I also ran this conduit up over here to this outlet over here, which I'm going to use for the air conditioner. And then, of course, the original water heater. This is a three position switch I bought on eBay. And it'll switch between three different circuits. In my case, um, I don't need to switch the entire circuit, just the hot wire. But uh, anyway, it's uh, it's off with three positions. So one will be the water heater, one will be the, the heater under the range, the other one will be the outlet used for the air conditioner. And uh, depending on what I'm doing, I normally wouldn't be using all three at once. The water heater is a, is a dual use propane also. I almost never use it on electricity. Anyway. So I'll show you how I'm mounting this. I was drilling that out with the drill press. And I <laughs> mean cough. See that wasp nest there? This I was drilling and suddenly this wasp nest came down. Oh there's one. And a bunch of wasps came out. There's one right there. So I kind of ran away, but they're the paper wasps are actually pretty mellow, at least the ones we have around here. The yellow jackets, on the other hand, they look like a yellow jacket, but they're not. Here, I'm going to take off here. It's kind of looking at me funny. The yellow jackets are very mean and aggressive, but the paper wasps are pretty mellow. I didn't get stung. Anyway, here's how I'm mounting this. This is a regular, you know, cover plate. I was drilling this with the drill press when all those wasps came out. but So I drilled a hole here. For the spindle and then these holes for these mounting screws and so I'm going to mount the switch to this and then screw it into a box but I'll show you what the thing is this thing is so big a normal box wouldn't work this is a surface mount box that's used for surface mount wiring and uh, so I'm going to put that over this box here and uh, I'm even there, I'm not so sure I'm still going to have enough room. I'm going to put the wall back. This was plywood originally, and I had to cut it for wiring. And initially, when my plumbing froze one year, I had to rip it out. So now I've got it covered with uh, diamond plate. So I'm, anyway, I put the wall all back together and mount that thing and see whether I can get it to all fit in here. I think it's I think I still need to do something else with this, but we'll see in a minute. So this red wire coming in here is the is the hot wire. And then these are the three different circuits. Water heater, the heater and the air conditioner outlet. This is what was in there before. There was a cabinet down there. And I made this out of a piece of sheet metal, so this is going to screw up where that, that cabinet door was, and the, the heater will stick out of here. There's the switch ready to wire up. Um, you can see I had to use a second box, but it's all ready to go. So the switch was so deep, I ended up putting two of these surface mount boxes together. This is a deep one, and this is a 
normal one. This thing is very, <laughs> very spacious. So that's off. Zero. One is. Here's my kick heater down here. Two is the water electric water heater. This is dual propane electric. And then three energizes this circuit up here. So I used a red one just to mark it as special. And this is uh, where I use my air conditioner during the summer. I've got a portable air conditioner. I plug in there. Okay, well, I think that's about it for this time. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a good one. Later. Thank you.